we are going to create a color palette called the Zorn palette. This is an example of the Zorn palette painted in oils. And for this palette, it's quite muted. I used a very muted yellow ochre, cadmium red, white, and black. And so you can see there is a color missing here, a primary color, and that's blue. The Zorn palette is a wonderful palette that you can use for skin tones. And it's a very, very natural looking palette as well. So this is called a limited color wheel. So today I I will be painting the Zorn palette, but instead of using yellow ochre and cadmium red, I will be using primary red and I will be using primary yellow, white, and black. I'm going to trace a small circle and a large circle to get my color wheel started. You can use whatever you want to trace this circle. I'm going to use my ruler to divide it into 12 equal parts. Let's start with our primaries because those are just the pure color. So let's start with our yellow. So you can turn your color wheel if you have to. So the magic will really happen once we add the gray because the rest of the colors will look very similar. Paint the red on the fourth step. So next, what we're going to do is we are going to mix a blue, <laughs> okay? But the blue is not going to be blue. It's going to be black and white. So it's actually going to be gray. However, it's going to be a slightly darker gray just because the natural value of blue is pretty dark. So I'm just going to mix my white and my black. Try to match the value of the red. It can be slightly lighter just because white is more opaque. And then we're going to skip three and then paint on the fourth one. So this one is going to be our gray. Okay, so let's mix our green. <laughs> So whoever told you that you can't mix green without blue lied to you. You can mix green without blue. Let's do it now. So just using whatever pigment is on your brush, you can remove some of it. And we're going to start to tint it with yellow. So I'm just going to mix it here. And as you tint this yellow with your gray, you will start to see it looking green. Right? It's like this rich olive green color, which is quite nice. So now that I've put all my yellow in here, I want to try to get a slightly lighter value than the gray, but obviously it's going to be darker than the yellow. Okay, so next we're going to make our purple using our blue, so this gray that we mixed, and then we're going to add red to it. I think I have a nice purple. It's a fairly desaturated purple. Like it's a very natural looking purple and you can use it for shadows on skin. So this is your secondary color using the gray. So next we're going to paint our orange. So the orange is going to look super bright by comparison just because we're using a primary yellow and a primary red. So using a new brush, I'm going to start to mix this orange. You'll notice that you won't need a lot of red at all. You'll need quite a bit of yellow and just a tiny, tiny bit of red. So you can always turn your color wheel because it's very, very hard to get perfect edges with just one orientation. I always turn my pieces so that I get the nicest edges. So once I have my orange in, 
I can start to paint in my tertiaries. So since I already have the orange, I'm going to probably do my yellow orange. And to do that, I'm gonna to try to take the cleanest yellow that I have and start to add to my current orange, and lighten it. So you can see, despite all of the color, that all of the yellow I added to it, it still feels a little bit dark. So I have to add more yellow. Also, if you have a really gunky brush, you can just kind of clear it off with the palette knife like that. So I feel like this is a little bit too dark. It's definitely closer to the orange than to the yellow. So if that happens, what you can do is you can scrape off a little bit of that color. I'm really looking for the right in between. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add straight yellow to this section and just kind of mix it in, hoping to lighten it up a lot more. So the next color I'm gonna mix is my red orange. So to do that, I already have some of this orange and I'm gonna mix in some of this red. You can see that the green looks very green next to my red and color is very relative, which means if I want something to look green or more green, I just put red next to it. Kind of like how people with blue eyes, their eyes look really blue, but they're not really blue. They're actually gray eyes. Nobody has blue pigment in their bodies. The reason why it looks blue is because our skin tone is very orange and orange is the opposite color of blue. So it's all visual tricks. I can kind of see that this is a little bit closer to my orange than the red. So what I might have to do is darken it just a little bit. So first removing that paint and then I'm gonna add some more red to it. This is my red orange. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring back my purple brush that I used, and I'm gonna mix red into the purple to get a red purple. So because I'm using water-soluble oils, I'm adding a little bit of water when my colors seem very thick and uncooperative. A little bit of that water will give it the right consistency. The blue or the gray will cool this red just enough to get this really nice muted purple. So here's my red purple, here's my purple. This is gonna be my blue purple. So as I get to the gray, it's gonna be more and more desaturated. So I'm gonna save some of that color there and I'm going to bring back my blue with my black and white and then start to mix in some of this purple that I was using so it's just slightly more gray. The key is to try to get this nice and even, even amount of steps. Next thing I'm gonna do is paint my blue green and paint my yellow green. So I think I'll do yellow green first just because I have a fresh brush So the last color is going to be my green blue. So here's my green and to make the blue, I have to take my black and I just start a separate pile here and I'm going to add white, I'm trying to keep these colors very clean. And then now I'm going to mix the green into the gray or our blue for the Zorn palette and very carefully paint in this desaturated teal. So the pure black and white is more of a cool gray because white and black, they both cool other hues. So the last thing I'm gonna do is make some notes on it. And there we go. This is the Zorn palette. If we compare this palette with the other palette, you can see the different range of color based on the red and the yellow that I used. So both of them are the Zorn palette, except you can switch up your red 
and your yellow. So if you use a brighter red and a brighter yellow, then you're going to get brighter range of colors. And if you use a duller red and a duller yellow, like yellow ochre, then you will get less of a range. Last color palette, if you want to compare, is our CMY color palette, which uses a blue, right? So you can kind of see that limiting this color will make it a lot more subtle. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe so you never miss an upload. If you'd like to support the channel and the creation of free arts education, become a member on Patreon for behind the scenes perks and online classes at Wing Canvas. Join our art nerd community with the links down below. If you enjoyed this video, here are some other videos you can check out next.